Let's get more from the Arsenal perspective now and speak to Arsenal Fan TV presenter James Bayliss. Good morning to you, James. Casado, is he exactly what Arsenal need? And a fair point there, would he actually be coming in as a squad player because of how well Partey and Shaka are playing? Uh, yeah, and a pretty expensive squad player. But I think when you're coming up against the likes of Man City and, you know, I was there at the Etat on Friday night, they brought on... Bernardo Silva, you know, they've got players like Phil Foden, who's, you know, not in that starting 11. Yeah, that's the level of quality we're up against, um, you know, to try win the, the, the Premier League. What I would say about Casado is profile wise, he feels pretty perfect. I mean, you've got a player here who's 21 years old, has got Premier League experience. He's, um, you know, he's got World Cup experience, albeit a season's worth of Premier League experience. But, you know, some big performances against the likes of Liverpool at Anfield, against Man United, he scored a goal. Great performance against Chelsea in a 4 1 win as well. So he feels like a kind of player that can. You know, cover as a defensive midfielder, can maybe play alongside a Parte or, or, or an El Nenny, because of course we don't know how long his injury is, you know, is going to rule him out. And then you've got your Europa League football. So he feels profile wise like exactly what Arsenal would and should be looking for. But again, it feels like a really difficult deal to do. And he probably is going to be depth. But then at the same time, if Arsenal want to compete on all fronts, especially next season, if you know, it's looking good for the Champions League, let's hope we're in it. Um, you know, he's going to get a lot of significant first team game time as well and develop with a really young squad. So, yeah, he does seem to fit the bill, but again, it was a difficult one to do. I think you might be all right on the top front, uh, on the top four front this year, uh, James. Yeah. Two bids rejected. Are you relaxed about whether they go in for a third bid or not, or does it just make sure they get him? Um, Brighton have made their starts pretty clear, haven't they? I mean, as an Arsenal fan, you know, I, there's always that hope, you know, is this just good negotiation and, and behind the scenes more is being said. But I think you, you've got to trust the reports. They're very publicly saying he's not for sale. So Arsenal are well within their right to keep bidding if they want. Um, but I'd hope that behind the scenes there's more going on in terms of looking at other options, looking at, you know, exploring other deals, talking to other players and seeing who else might be available. Because Brighton, you know, they've got every right to stand firm. They're, they're chasing, you know, European football, they're in the FA Cup, they've been brilliant this season. They've got every right to stand by their position and say, look, we don't want to lose a key player. So Arsenal have to be prepared for the fact that, you know, they, they probably aren't going to get him and look elsewhere. Um, so, yep, they keep bidding, but it feels like it's going to take a lot of money. And even already, it feels like we'd be overpaying. But if he's the one after the once, then I suppose you have to back him. OK, well, whether it's Casado or not, let, let's say he doesn't come in. Is there somebody else that you would like to see come in before the deadline, whether it be a central midfielder or maybe even a different position? Well, I mean, OK, let's look at uh, Leandro Trossard, for example. You know, he, you know, we knew we were chasing Mudrick and, you know, we end up bringing Trossard, who can play out wide and fill those positions, but maybe does it in a slightly different way. He can also play in the front three. He, he feels like a bit of a creator as well as, a, you know, Mudrick very much feels like a powerful runner and dribbler. So we addressed it with a slightly different profile of player. So does it have to be a specialist holding midfielder at the age of around 21 to 23? Is there someone else, you know, like a Yuri Tielemans, who we were linked with you know, for ages last summer? And he's not a defensive midfielder, but maybe just adds body to that central midfield area. And there's another way of mixing it up. So it's a difficult one. We've been linked with Zubi Mendy. Again, feels like an exciting player. There's a release clause there. But then, you know, he's, he's doing well with Sociedad and he, you know, apparently doesn't want to move till the summer. So I'd hope that they're exploring other deals. A, a specific name, I'm not 100% sure, but the likes of Zubin, Mendy, Tielemans, yeah, maybe Arsenal could look at players like that. But again, they won't necessarily be easy deals to do either. James, great to speak to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers. Quite interesting hearing from a few Brighton fans who've been getting in touch using the hashtag transfer talk, like John, who says, just let him go. His heart's not there. You won't get the best out of him. Let him go and sit on the bench at Arsenal. And Jake, also a Brighton fan, says Arsenal bid £70 million for a player. The player wants to leave. Cash in. Uh, this might be the most that Brighton get offered. Casado's not worth £70 million, in my opinion. So Brighton would be better... Letting, sorry, Brighton would be getting the better side of the deals. So that's a few Brighton fans uh, getting in touch. But, Kyle, is there an actual urgency for Arsenal to sign a central midfield? We've talked about how good Party and Shaka have been. And it does appear that Caicedo would be bringing in to provide competition as opposed to going straight into the first team. Definitely, and I think that strength in depth is something that Arsenal fans in particular will be looking at their squad thinking, OK, we're in a great position, we're top of the Premier League, we've not been in this position in a way thinking we can actually win the Premier League for 
quite a while. They've not celebrated winning the title since 2004. So they're looking at that, probably panicking a little bit, thinking, what can we do urgently to ensure that we stay there, we keep off the likes of Manchester City, um, away from the top place in the Premier League? And I think that actually for them, they're... They need to look back on what they've actually done and what they've achieved already this season with what they have. Instead of worrying about injuries, yes, if they do, if they if Party gets injured, if Jackie gets injured, then that is going to disrupt their season a lot. But actually, they've come so far and they've looked great. The football they're playing, the football that Mikel Arteta has got them playing, I think they look so exciting. And that is because of the likes of Party, because of the likes of Xhaka. I don't think that Casado would just come in and be able to replicate that straight away if he was to arrive here in the January window and actually help them go on to win the title. I think it's what they've already got. So it's difficult because, yes, if they get an injury, of course, they'll look back and they'll think, oh, if only we would have brought in Caicedo, mm. if only we would have done this. But if they don't, they won't even be thinking about this moment right here. So it just depends if they can keep the players they've got fit and if they can manage to hold on for the rest of the season.